What's up, you guys? It is Simone, a.k.a. Money Mo here, and we are live with Money Mo Media. Um, I might not physically be in the clubhouse, but when I'm on this mic speaking this W to you, I'm in the clubhouse. But here are some rules. Here are some rules, you guys. We're not going to have no Dodgers slander, no Lakers slander, no Rams slander, and we're not going to tolerate the hate in women's sports because that is – that's not cool over here. That's not flying. So this week is Commissioner's Cup week, which is like – basically an in-season tournament where each team from the W picks an organization or foundation they play for. And the cash money, the prize money, whatever you want to call it, goes to those charities and foundations of their choice. The winner of the Commissioner's Cup tournament gets the big bucks, right? The big bucks goes to the foundation, not the players. Fun fact, the NBA took this idea of the in season tournament, but they keep the money. So speaking of Commissioner's Cup, it was a great game that was on today of the C- Seattle Storm and the Las Vegas Aces. And the Storm outplayed the Aces and got the dub. And shout out to Jewel Lloyd Go Mama. She had 25 points. She was really aggressive tonight. She was the reason they got that W. Skyler Diggins, Smith was hooping too. NECA, like it was a great team win. And this was a big win for the West just because the Aces have dominated the West for the past two seasons. And now they finally got a team playing against a team that kind of matches up with them backcourt-wise. And the bigs are just as athletic and can stand up against the Aces and Asia Wilson. So that was a pretty good one. Uh, Hey, hey, we've been talking about the Storm. I told you about them Storm. They storming. Hey, is this the same person that run the Las Vegas Aces stance account? Oh, I'm telling, I'm telling. Mark Davis, get your boy, I'm telling. And hey, look, man, I'm running the Chelsea Gray burner page too, man. We, <laughs> it's a lot going on in Aces world right now. We, we've lost some greats. We lost the point guard. Apparently, we're replacing you, them with Tiffany. You guys, Flix is so extra. Like We are in peril. All right, we are currently not the number one seed in WNBA. What is going on? Mm teams playing chess they matching up they matching up with the champs they're not trying to have they're not trying to let y'all three p it's it's tough i mean do you think the storm now the storm they take the lead seat in the west now or is it dallas or i think y'all forgetting who runs the west record wise it's the minnesota Lynx. Mm. oops i didn't mean to bust y'all bubble but i like that the west is competitive and it's someone to go against the aces but you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to promote the game that's going to be on national television. And this one's going to be a good game. This is going to be a great Commissioner's Cup game. We're going to have the New York Liberty take on the Connecticut Sun, you guys. Will the Connecticut Sun start 10-0? and Or will the Liberty give them their first L of the season? All I do know is that Brianna Stewart is going to go for 40. Y'all heard it here first. She's going to go for 40. Young Stewie. Yeah, I mean, so what do you say about the Liberty this year? You, they aren't technically as good as the Sun on paper. You think the Liberty come away with a win? And you know what's crazy? That's kind of like the Aces. They may not be good on pe- paper, quote unquote, record wise, but I like it like this. It's a little more competitive. Like the Liberty's in a good spot, Aces in a good spot, the Sun are in a good spot. It's like it's like a little com- it's like a it's like a little more competitive because you know, kind of last season, you know how we was kind of like the Aces is just who's gonna be the Aces. Who's going to do this? Now it's competitive to where it's like you kind of, we kind of like on the edge of our seats, you know? I like it like this. Parity is good for the league. Yeah, I love it. And speaking of the league, I want to I want to shout out to the Rooks because the Rooks are the Rooks are putting up some numbers. So shout out to Aaliyah Edwards, Angel Reese, and Cameron Brink, who all had double doubles this week in their bag. And then we got to give a shout out to Caitlin Clark, who had a 30 ball. She was seven for 13 from the three point line. That's super efficient. Shout out to her for bouncing back from that one for 10 type of game and shooting lights out. We learn it, we hitting that learning curve as we go. But, Flicks, you already know what time it is. I got to get into my MVP ladder. I feel, I feel like people are waiting to hear what I have to say regarding my MVP letter, but here's my rules I want to give to folks before we get into it. My MVP letter is different, okay? It may change from one person to four people 
to three people to two people because it's my segment and I said what I said. That's how that's how I'm coming about it. But my MVP ladder right now, I have four. I have four people. But before I get into the MVP ladder, I want us to break down what MVP means. Most valuable player. All right. Not most popular. Not the person who scores the most type player. Not the not popular. Valuable. Okay. So I took I took the liberty of pulling up the definition of valuable from the dictionary, right? And we're talking about valuable in the form of an adjective. All right. So the definition is extremely useful or important. Okay. So if y'all want to really break that down, like what does she mean by extremely useful or important? Let's look at some similar words. So some of the similar words, if you want to look at that is valued, effective, right? Um, Beneficial and productive. So let's keep those words in the back of our mind when I go over this MVP ladder, okay? Flix, what did you think about my MVP ladder before, first? Because I want you, I want to get your opinion first because I was being real secretive about it in the chat. I mean, I told you if number one didn't rhyme with Malaysia, then it wouldn't make sense. Okay, so, uh, you, you, like you wasn't supposed to say that. Like, why Why you? <laughs> you give it, you give it, the way. I'm not even, you know what I'm saying? Well, the, the graphics on the bottom, you know what I mean? So the cat's kind of out the, out the hat, but also... We have some good vets on this list, which is interesting because uh, we haven't seen a good vet win the MVP in a couple of years now at this point. Kind of like the younger generation has been taking over, but we see Duana Bonner's down there. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about it. So let's see. And that number – so I actually did took the liberty of working a little hard, of actually putting it in order instead of just putting them on the fly. So sitting at number four, I have Brianna Stewart at number four on the MVP ladder. Brianna Stewart of the New York Liberty, right? Um, she's kind of had a, I feel like she's kind of had a quiet season based on like all the activity that's going on right now in the W, but Brianna Stewart is still super efficient right now. She's averaging about 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. Um, what, what is it about Brianna Stewart? Why is she on my list? She's valuable. She's useful and effective. Like, remember those words I said about MVP. Okay. She shoots from all three levels well. She rebounds well. She is that difference maker for the team and the leader. Like, what is not to love about her game? Like I said last season, she was in her back at Seattle, but in New York, it's just different. It's just, she just knows she's the top dog. And she plays like it. And when she plays great like that, when she's when her field goal percentage is high, her team has a high probability of winning the game. She leads the charge. And, of course, she has a good core of team rates around her, like Sabrina Nescu, Courtney Vanisloot, Benajia Laney Hamilton, John Quill Jones. But it's just something about Brianna Stewart because she holds her own. And I feel like she'll, she's going to be on this list majority of the season because the numbers match. She, she, she she's, she's still one of the top dogs. I don't want y'all to forget that about her. But – I think when they play the sun on Saturday, I told Flix, I told the chat, she gonna drop, she might drop forty. She might drop forty Saturday. That's crazy. I I have a feeling she might drop forty because the, everybody want to beat the sun right now. So I think she's gonna give and bring her a game. And speaking of the sun, we are gonna go into number three on the list with Dewana Bonner. Okay, on this list, she scores the lowest points. But let's go back to those words I was saying, right? Let's go back to those words. She's useful, effective, beneficial, right? That's what I think of when I think of MVP. And even though she's only scoring 19 points and averaging six rebounds, her her field goal percentage is 48%, which is great, okay? And Dewana Bonner for the Sun is that player. Even though Alyssa Thomas averages triple doubles it's just something about Dewana Bonner and her effectiveness and her presence on that court that just makes them so great and dynamic like the one game that made me put her on this list because I know you guys are probably like why Dewana Bonner not not AT so it was a game where they played the sky right and that was the game where Alyssa Thomas did that flagrant foul to Angel Reese and when AT got kicked out the game the sky had momentum the sky had all the momentum in the world. They could have took the game over and won by 15. 
they could have probably went on a 10 and 0 run in my opinion, just because the momentum shift, just watching the game and the energy change. But no, Dewana Bonner went to work. She's seen it was some points where Angel Reese was guarding her. Oh, like you slow on your feet. <laughs> you, you a rookie. Let me show you. Let me show you why it's a, it's a woman's league. Pulling up threes, hooping, hooping. Dewana Bonner is a hooper. I don't want y'all to count her out. That's why she's sitting number three on my list. And right now she's number five on the all-time scoring list. Um, I wouldn't be surprised this season if she finished the number four, the number three spot, because she's she she could put up numbers. Don't let that 19 to 6 fool you. It's a beneficial and useful 19 to 6. All right. Let's go to number two. That the team that's currently sitting number one in the West, and it's because of Nafisha Collier. She's number two on my MVP list. She's averaging 22 points and 11 rebounds. I love Nafisha Collier because she is just great. She develops her game every year. Like, she comes back a better player. The fact that she is so assertive in her shot selection, super aggressive attacking the basket, she leads the charge for that team. And she's the reason why they're number one in the West. Great scorer, great rebounder, a great leader. Like, why not? Why not have that on your team? Like, she's the reason they're going. Like, I want you guys to catch her in action. It's just, I just can't, I just can't ex- explain enough. Like, she doesn't do, do anything crazy or out the norm, ordinary regarding her game. She just plays basketball and she's just efficient. That's all I could say. That's why she's at the number two spot. And the fact that they. The, from the season they had last year to now, she's beneficial and useful. So she's that's why she's number two on my MVP ladder. So we're going to get into number one, okay? Drum roll, please. Number one, Asia Wilson. Don Staley tweeted the other day, just give her the trophy. Give her the trophy now. The go. Give, give her the trophy. And... I said this before, quote me on it. I, Cause I feel like in 10, 15, 20, maybe 20 years, people are gonna go back to this video. I'm calling Asia Wilson. She's gonna be the new logo. The, I'm gonna call her Miss Logo. That's that's my stamp for her. I could see the WBA giving her being the being one of the logos because she's just that great and dynamic of a player. And right now she's averaging 28 points and 12 rebounds. She's playing great. You know, Asia Wilson right now is playing with a chip on her shoulder. I don't know if you guys remember last season. I I, I hate that I'm even saying this. Did y'all know last season on the MVP list, they had her coming in fourth? Fourth place. Whoever that committee is, give me your hands right now. I'm giving you a pow-pow because how dare you? Fourth place. So that's how she's coming playing. She said, oh, y'all got me fourth place last season. So I'm about to show y'all. I'm about to show y'all there's no, this This isn't given fourth place. She's dominant. Dominant on the on the low block, in the, in the 15-foot range, even pulling a three. And her guards play aggressive defense, and they're letting them go by, and she's throwing it out of there. <laughs> she's throwing it out of there like, all around she's playing with a chip on her shoulder and i wouldn't be surprised if she's in this number one spot all the see all all this season so i'm really excited to see if asia wilson keeps this up i wouldn't be surprised before the olympic break if she's averaging like 31 32 points a game 15 rebounds and probably four blocks that would be a pretty nice stat line for her and i wouldn't be surprised because she's putting up great numbers this last seven games she's putting up MVP numbers. I'm excited. I'm excited for that. Shout out to them aces. That's the one thing. The aces, you know, we may be low on the standards right now. We're at fifth, but we do have Asia Wilson. But you got to remember, though, they only it's only been ten games, so it's only been ten games. You got to stop stressing. It's okay because. You, I don't know why you thought teams was just gonna let y'all be at the top dog for two years. Teams had to move some pieces around. They had to play chess. They stopped playing checkers. They put them checkerboards up. 
Yeah, now you got teams like the Storm out here that are, are playing some serious basketball. That, they're going to be a problem. And Minnesota. Come on. We can't forget Minnesota. Minnesota sitting number one in the West. I'm not sure if I'm drinking the Minnesota and Connecticut Kool-Aid yet. You know, I'd like to see 10 more games of this. Um, We don't even got to wait 10 games. Let's see who's in this Commissioner's Cup championship. Hmm. That That might be... That might be crucial, but I feel like the Commissioner's Cup is different because it's based off points. So, like, that's why if you notice some of these Commissioner Cups games, these teams run the score up because it's based on points. Yeah, it's kind of a weird way to do it. But that's how that's how the NBA did it. It's literally yeah. the same rules. Yeah, not exactly. That's, that was the thing, too. There was a point in the play-in where some teams, I think like Boston was one of the play-in games, and there was a question about if we should blow this team out by more than – you know, 20 or 30 points because we need more points to go to the next round. I'm trolling. I'm trolling. It's giving AAU. <laughs> it's giving I, AAU pool play. Know, it's, 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 I already like it. Now. It's giving AAU pool play. <laughs> it's giving AAU pool play. Like, let's win by 30 so we can go to the championship round. Then the championship yeah. round, you got to win two. <laughs> you if saying? you win two, you only win by five, you're in third. <laughs> oh, but... That's I think that's the um that's how it's gonna go. Like it's basically based off points. So the team that's more efficient, the teams that scores the most points, will be the team that make it in the championship. I wouldn't be surprised if I see Seattle in the Commissioner's Cup championship just because they have they have moments where it's like four to five players in double figures almost every game this season. They, they score a lot of points. They were up by about ten points on the Aces for a majority of the game and, and yeah. Look at the scoring. They pace. They are like the pacemakers when it comes to their basketball game. They score a lot of points. Yeah. So, like I was saying before, the 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 key to stopping the storm is to stop them in transition. You have to stop them in transition, and you have to make them run their sets. Because even though they're effective and efficient in running their sets, they turn the ball over a lot too. I don't know if you noticed. They t- they do they do turn the ball over a lot. Yeah. They, they turn the ball. Do- they have a lot of ball dominant players. Right, but the fact that you have a lot of ball dominant players and you turn the ball over a lot is kind of like it's kind of like taking five step five steps forward, ten steps back, in my opinion, because you can't be super aggressive scoring and you're turning the ball over. Because if you're playing a really great team, they're going to take advantage of those t- of those turnovers. They're going to score on those turnovers. Now, that's that's very true. It's also uh, you know being ball dominant, you got to have that IQ be able to make good passes exactly and that's why i said before um the previous episode they won the they won free agency by picking up a point guard in skylar diggins smith and neca people players to play around jewel lloyd so she could just worry about putting that ball in the basket she ain't got to worry about bringing the ball up um you know so and ezzy's playing big mercedes russell's playing big too so they finally getting it right. And shout out to um, Coach Noel Quinn, the L.A. native, L.A. legend, Bishop Montgomery legend, UCLA great. Shout yeah. out to her. Right, L.A., right? L.A. for real. That's pretty lit. Uh, let's get into this top six, though. Top six, talk about Connecticut. They're blown by everybody. They went nine straight, nine and oh. Got the Liberty. Mm-hmm. So the Lynx, Seattle, Vegas, and Atlanta. Which of these teams do you think is a shoe-in to make it to the championship? Um, if we were going off the stuff today, I think Connecticut, all the pressure is on them. For them, it's final. For me, to them, finals or bust. If they don't make it to the finals this season, something has to happen with the system. Not necessarily the coach, because the coach is great. It's the system. Because it's like you have these key players, you have these talented players, but it may be something missing. But the way they are playing is great. Dijon Carrington, stamp it here. Make sure you put in your notes. I got her down for MIP, most improved player. I agree. I was going to say the same thing. Stamped. It's stamped. Like how last year I, I stamped so two. I'm stamping, I'm stamping Dijon this year. Who's up there? What have you been thinking about for six, six women of the year? Ooh. I've been looking at the storm. Yeah, um, I gotta I gotta keep looking because it's a couple of it's a couple of pieces, it's a couple of pieces. It's a, it's been a couple of adjustments in lineups. I have to see. 
I have to see because it's a lot of great, it's a lot of great players coming off the bench and making momentum. And then a couple of teams that I was watching, but you know what? Scratch it. I know who it is, but I'm gonna shake the table with this one. Go ahead and say it. Kennedy Carter. All right, come on. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. Kennedy facts. Carter. It is facts. Kennedy Carter. But I feel like the only way she wouldn't win is because they're sitting in that in that three to five spot. I feel like it's a couple teams that's in that three to five spot or like four and five or like, you know, four and six spot. And the only way that would determine if she gets six women of the year is if they make that, if they make in make it in the top eight. Yeah, like an actual push. Exactly. Which is kind of tough. It's kind of tough because what she's doing off the bench is I mean, it's pretty amazing. She has like 13, 14 points off the bench. Yeah, like, like if it was up to me, I'm giving it to Kennedy Carter. But due to the new eyes and all the stuff that's going on, do I think they're gonna give it to her? No. But it's for sure Kennedy it's for sure Kennedy Carter. Hollywood. Facts. It's for sure Kennedy Carter. Like I don't care what nobody says, go argue with your mama, not me. It's my segment. And, and matter of fact, just look at the numbers. Kennedy Carter, if we were given awards today, I'm gonna give it to her. She got a Chicago, she got Chicago wrapped around her finger right now. She got a standing ovation going to the game last week. Yeah, and um, like I said on the live, like that team, they're exciting to watch just because all of them play with a chip on their shoulder. They got something to prove without something to prove, if that makes sense. Like with the hype Angel Reese came in with, that's her chip. Kennedy Carter, just her reputation that she's had and just her journey to double W, that's her chip. Marina Mayberry feeling like she has to have a quote unquote supporting cast, like she can't put this team on her back. That's a chip on her shoulder. Their head coach, one of the greatest point guards in the game, Teresa Witherspoon, chip on her shoulder. She that's how she played. She played with a chip on her shoulder because she was like that. Yeah. Um, so there is in Dana Evans too. the fact that people were really counting her out and the fact now she's in that bigger role. So they all play with a chip on their shoulder and they're just fun to watch. Like it's just something about them that is like, if they're on TV, I'm going to watch them. Yeah. Super a dangerous team. Currently Kenny Carter is averaging 13.9 points, two rebounds, two assists and about one steal in 20 minutes of play, man. She's efficient. Wild. That's uh, if that's efficient right there. That that's game changing play. Those are game changing type of numbers. Imagine her coming in and you're down five and can't get in the rhythm, and she comes in and gets a steal. Comes in and gets a layup or hits a big three. That's a real momentum shifter type of player. Six woman of the year right there. I'm giving I'm giving it to her. So we already got our two. We already got two two awards stamped. <laughs> Facts. Early, early, early. Yep, we stamping in here first. Good. Uh, definitely had to chime in on that. And then let's talk a little bit about the, the Atlanta Dream. They don't get really any headlines. They're four and four, but they are number six in the W right now. Yeah. So um, remember that was my t- that was one of my sleeper teams because I had Dallas. But then when I but then it's like of course any team that I pick and they be everybody be hurt it's always something. But my sleeper team was the Atlanta Dream, and like I said. Um, in a previous episode, they were another team that took advantage of free agency and they picked up players that they needed. They picked, they needed a point guard. So they picked up Jordan Canada. So once she's back and healthy, they're going to be look totally different. And they picked up another dynamic score in aerial powers. I was, I was like, okay, when they played the aces, and Jackie Young told Ariel Powers, you not like that? Ariel Powers had to show her she was like that. <laughs> I, I feel like people be forgetting. Ariel Powers is like that. I don't care what nobody says. Six one, long athletic. She kind of plays like a, it's a mix between Carmelo Anthony and Kevin Durant. Mid-range queen right there. Go ahead, TT. Yeah, nah. Oh, no, TT. She in her prime years. Not she had like five years. You know, but it's just funny because Jackie Young said that speaking up to her as like she's like a vet to Jackie, you know. Yeah, Jackie, Jackie Young got like probably like I think I believe like a year on her, but they might have came out the same year, if I'm not mistaken. But 
Yeah, Ariel Powers is like that. Like, let's not <laughs> let's not get this confused. Let's not get this confused. I feel like she just because she bounced around a few teams, it's like y'all must have forgot. But I think she found a home with the dream, and I like it. I'm rolling. I could see them. I could see them shaking up some of the rankings too. Like if they play like a, a Minnesota, like they'll probably be the team that kind of shakes the top six. I wouldn't be surprised if I see them at number four. I wouldn't be surprised if I seen them at number four because for for my Dallas for my Dallas Wings, I don't know how they're going to be once Sutu comes back because they're expecting her to come back after the Olympic break. Yeah, whatever that means. Yeah, so I don't know how that's going to be, but I believe she'll. I don't know if she's playing for Germany in the Olympics. I don't know yet, but I know she'll she'll be in some type of rhythm before coming back with the team. And I know Natasha Howard is out with a foot injury, so we'll see how that goes. But Erika Gumawale is putting them on they putting them on her back, hooping. She might be. I feel like between her and Jewel Lloyd and Asia Wilson, we got a th- we, got, we got a them three. You know that um, meme with the um, the Spider Man when they be pointing at each other mm-hmm. <laughs> for the scoring champ. Them, <laughs> yeah, it's them three. Like. I don't see anybody else catching up with them in that scoring, in that scoring champ type thing. But um, who's sitting at number three? Three, we got Minnesota Lynx. We spoke about them a little bit. I, oh yeah, because they're number one in the West. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're at number two. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, they're playing great basketball right now. They're putting together good wins, and that's the key in the W. Here you heard it here for me first. Here's here's a couple of keys in the W. Like finding players that you need to fit the system, staying healthy, and piecing together good wins. Because there's gonna be some back to back games where you might lose to like a like a fever or the Mystics. But if you're piecing together good wins back to back and you're not in no little losing streak, you'll be good. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I have. But um number two is the Liberty, correct? Yep. Oh, so we got number one and number two Saturday. That's y'all make sure you know my West Coast folks. Make sure y'all get y'all um y'all breakfast y'all breakfast and some mimosas. My, my East Coast people, make sure y'all be y'all get y'all lunch because that's gonna be a good game. That's gonna be a good game. I'm tuned in, and it's gonna be on ABC. Flex, you gonna be tuned in or what? Are you gonna be just watching highlights? Or are you just gonna be or with the casual? What you gonna do? Hey man, hopefully the game. You said it's going to be on ABC? Yeah, you got to tune oh, in. That's going to be the one. Hey, look, I've been watching on Stream East. It's kind of tough some days. I'm not going to lie. Okay, you got to turn on You got to put it on ABC. You got to stream it. ABC, we good, though. We good. I got cable. Period. Boom. We in action. Right. But that's enough of the top six for you guys. Um, I wanted to really talk this basketball to y'all, so I ain't got no fits today. Um, I kind of been lagging on the fits. I'm not even going to lie because I've just been so in tune with this Um commissioner's cup stuff but next time we come back i'll have some fits for y'all because i know y'all like that i know y'all miss me saying tens across the board because i miss saying tens across the board but i think we had a great episode today gave y'all a little rundown um i gave out my mvp letter so i had a huge weight lifted off my shoulders like i don't have y'all asking me who you think gonna be on there i already told you but hey i'm gonna come back in a couple weeks the list may change. It may be one more person on the list. It may just be three. You never know. But make sure you um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram because I'll be I'm gonna be posting clips. Make sure y'all like it, run the views up, share it because we all tapped into the W now. So we should all be getting that good energy, and that good content because <laughs> the good content's coming here. Let's get to that. Okay, and then don't forget all my W gamers. Tap in because y'all haven't did that. Flix is on the games with the 2K. Who's going to be Flix in the Seattle Storm? But all right now, catch y'all next week.